The retail industry in America has a long history of change and innovation that has made a major impact both economically and socially. As World War II came to a close and the political and social unrest of the Vietnam War seared through the United States, a man from the heart of the Midwest planted his business roots and began, one step at a time, to redefine the entire country's shopping experience. This man is Sam Walton. One of the greatest American retail pioneers who left a legacy on local, national, and global arenas. Sam Walton led his employees and other business people by motivating them towards a common goal and creating a culture for Walmart that was inspiring to be a part of. Walton left a legacy of popularizing the big discount store business model. Yet some say that Walton left a legacy of negatively affecting Walmart employees, small businesses, and retail suppliers. Sam Walton's experience as a great leader and entrepreneur began in his childhood years in Kingfisher, Oklahoma. As a boy, he worked many paper routes selling milk and delivering milk and selling eggs and working um, all through high school and all through college as a paper boy. And so I think that's where he really learned the value of uh, earning money. In high school, Sam Walton was a member of both the basketball and football teams, and although he was not the best athlete, he made up for this by being an astounding leader and motivator to the players. When Walton graduated from the University of Missouri, he started work at a JCPenney store where he learned the basics of retail, most notably the importance of customer service, a cornerstone value of his retail empire. In 1945, after World War II had ended and Walton left the military, he purchased a Ben Franklin variety store in Newport, Arkansas. His Ben Franklin store became the leading retailer in a six-state region. And one of, my, one of my goals, as you well know, was to make that the best store in Arkansas. That's right. And we got there before we left town. We came, became the biggest store, the most profitable well, uh, Ben Franklin store in the state of Arkansas. Walton also sold some of his products at lower prices, which caused more customers to come to his store. He proved that this business model worked and would go on to use it for the rest of his life. When the landlord of the Ben Franklin store caught wind of Walton's success, he desired the store for his own son and refused to renew Walton's lease. For some entrepreneurs, this would be the end, but Walton did not give up. He soon found himself in the small town of Bentonville, Arkansas, and opened Walton's Five and Dime in the summer of 1950. Walton made it a practice to visit other competing retail stores to see what they were doing and ask questions about what was and wasn't working for them. In his new store, he took the practice of selling things at discounted prices and applied it to this store. His local competitors could not contend with his consistently low prices. Walton began acquiring more and more stores. Maybe it was my itch for success, and maybe, too, I didn't want all of my eggs in one basket, Walton once explained. Even with all of these stores, Walton was not earning the profit that he desired, so he took his previous experiences of discounting items to get more customers and got the idea to build big stores that discounted everything that was in stock. He then built these big stores in small towns because there was not much competition, and it was the area that Walton was most familiar with. The very first Walmart store was built in 1962 in Rogers, Arkansas. As a leader with a vision, Walton motivated people to get involved in his growing retail business. When hiring employees, Walton sought people with the drive and initiative to do their job because he always believed that these two traits were inherent and therefore unteachable. Walton inspired his employees with his passion. He motivated them to do well, offer excellent customer service, and take pride in their company. A person who leads by example is a person who leads being willing to do whatever is necessary. Uh, it's a person who leads by valuing the contribution of others. And as I mentioned, he's just a great motivator. He could see in people uh, potential that sometimes we can't see ourselves. Every Saturday, Walton had meetings where he interacted with his employees and found out what was going on in his stores so he could improve the business. He also took employee input and helped to integrate it into the stores to help improve the shopping experience. Sam genuinely cared about other people. Sam did not have an ego. It wasn't all about Sam. Sam would talk to people in the store who were coming out of a trailer, unloading a trailer in the middle of summer, sweaty people and everything. He treated them no different than he treated the President of the United States. Because in Sam's mind, uh, we're all equal. And the greatest thing is that we've got ideas 
from all 380,000 people in the company, and that's the best part. We're all working together, and I hope we can keep it going that way. That's that's the secret. That's the key. And if we can, why, we'll lower the cost of living for everyone, not just in America, but we'll give the world an opportunity to see what it's like to uh, save and have a better lifestyle and a better life, a better life for all. Customers liked the low prices in the big stores, and more and more people started shopping at Walmart. As Walton puts it, there is only one boss, the customer, and he can fire everybody in the company from the chairman on down simply by spending his money somewhere else. And Sam was driven by the idea of we're in business to serve people. Let me, let me just share with you what Sam's vision was. His vision was to reduce the cost of living for people people who shopped in our stores. And it began in small rural communities, spread to mid-sized markets, spread to suburban areas, and ultimately to uh, major metro areas. And uh, he was absolutely driven by the fact that we're going to reduce the cost of living. By 1969, there were 18 Walmart stores in Arkansas and Missouri alone. In 1980, Walton had 276 stores and would soon be opening stores at a rate of about 100 per year. As of 2015, Walmart is the biggest retailer in the world, and it has over 3,401 supercenters in the United States. Walmart has risen to the top because of Sam Walton's focus on growing in rural areas, places where stores like Kmart and Target weren't very active in. The growth of these Walmart stores has greatly affected the history of retail. Large retail stores appeared nationwide, offering customers everything under one roof, a one-stop shop model. Sam Walton's legacy, his creation of Walmart, has impacted the way that we shop by offering the gold standard through combining low prices and big store convenience. More than 50% of Americans live within 5 miles of a Walmart store, and approximately 90% of Americans live within 15 miles of a Walmart. There are critics who claim that Walton has left a legacy of negative impacts on associates, small businesses, and retail suppliers. Making Change at Walmart, a union-supported Walmart critic group, claims that Walmart associates are being negatively affected due to insufficient wages and benefits, forced overtime, off-the-clock labor, and anti-union activities. Making Change at Walmart also points to the fact that Walmart has had a negative effect on small businesses because local businesses find it hard to compete and therefore are dying off. Walmart has also been accused of forcing retail suppliers to engage in reverse auctions to try to offer the lowest cost products to sell to Walmart. When Sam Walton died in 1992, he left behind a legacy of a retail leader who inspired and motivated associates to be and do their best. Shortly before Walton's death, he was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom from President George H.W. Bush. This is the highest honor that a private citizen can receive in the United States. And it's about determination, it's about leadership, it's about decency. His nation honors him today as the outstanding example of American initiative and achievement. And at the same time, we take note that as he became more and more successful, he never turned his back on his roots. The Waltons have created a philanthropic legacy through creating the Walton Family Foundation, which gives money to education and environmental systems. In 2014, Walmart and the Walton Family Foundation gave $1.4 billion in cash and in-kind contributions around the world. Time Magazine and CBS News recognized Sam Walton as one of the 100 most influential people of the 20th century. Thanks to his innovative practices in the retail business sector, Sam Walton was able to create a successful business model in only 30 years. He created a model that delivered goods to consumers with the combination of promptness, price, and quality that would have been unthinkable in the earlier part of the 20th century. Walton had an eye for opportunity and an inherent understanding of the retail market. His strategy of creating and expanding the discount shopping market in small and large communities has made him a household name for the past 50 years. Walmart isn't just a store, a world-renowned company, or a phenomenon anymore. Walmart shapes where we shop, the products we buy, and the prices we pay, be it locally, nationally, or globally. Starting in small and sleepy rural Arkansas communities, Walton has undeniably left his legacy in the United States and the world. Sam Walton didn't just change the lives and spending habits of grocery shoppers. He changed the very ecosystem and rhythm of the supermarket business. His legacy lives on.